Hey guys, this is Cole with Regal Metalworks. Hey, uh, today's project and uh, part of yesterday's I started is to build this roof rack that uh, I, a customer came to me that had a, a 4x4 van with a high fiberglass top and he really wanted, really wanted a uh, roof rack for it. And a company out of California makes them but they didn't have a particular model for his. And he really, um, they said they would build him one but it would cost a substantial amount more because they don't have a design for it, so they'd have to design it. And the, the kicker was it was $700 to ship it across the coast. And this is like the third person. I think I spoke of this in other things, but I'm finally getting around to, to making this. But the whole issue is these guys have problems paying $700 for a $2,300 or $2,500 roof rack uh, just to ship it. So uh, they commissioned me, this, this particular person commissioned me, and there's uh, two other guys that, that are interested. One, I'm actually in the process of designing is for, instead of a really a roof rack, it's more for solar panels. But uh, I'll show you the, the design I did here in Fusion 360. This is the design, and it's all out of aluminum. It's a two-tier deck with a drop-down cut out for the sunroof. And I have each sheet, each piece laid down. Here are like the top surround and all my measurements. The bottom surround with all the, the lattice. And then the side view. So that I can make sure I get all my angles. Now I'm gonna have to, you know, hand fit a lot of this, but this is gonna get me in the ballpark of where I need to be. So I had purchased this, um, we decided to use inch and quarter, that's what he wanted to go with for aesthetic looks. Um, and the only thing that was available, available to me was the 6061 T6511. Now 6061 is, is a, a, a nice aluminum to work with, it welds well, it does, it does everything well. The only thing is, uh, it's generally heat treated, and that's what this number indicates, this T6511. That indicate, indicates the heat treating. And I wasn't sure, I, I, I've heard that, you know, bending it, I've had some luck with bending the sheet metal and I didn't have issues that you really need to anneal it or, it, you know, it won't bend, it can crack and things like that. So I purchased this figuring, you know, I could easily bend it at a six inch radius. If you look here, I have a six inch radius here. So it leaves a very large uh, bend, it's not a tight bend. So I figure I'll be fine, it'll bend, no problem. Uh, I'm not bending it to its maximum limit, but apparently T6 is the hardest um, hardening they have for 60-60-11, or uh, yeah, 60-61. It's the hardest um, heat treatment that they have for it. Now, uh, I spoke with the uh, manufacturer of these dies, and they told me that T4 would bend okay, but the best is if you had no heat treat on 6061. I don't know how readily available that material is. Uh, it seems like everywhere I look, it's all 6511, you know, heat treat. So I ran into an issue. I bent my first piece yesterday, and as you can see, right here is the results. It bent about maybe five degrees, and it just cracked, snap. And uh, I was like, oh man. What do I gotta do? And at that point, I completely forgot about annealing it. Um, so <laughs> I did some YouTube searching. I found some guys that annealed it. And I remember from annealing sheet metal that I tried to do the bend in house. Uh, it was like 600 degrees when they anneal it. Um, so I, and the way you would anneal it is you would take an acetylene torch, you would put the acetylene on it, it would black soot it. Then you would turn on your oxygen and then you would burn the, you would just heat it up until the, the um, coating, the black coating would burn away. That's a good way to tell if it's, if it's done. Problem with that is it's really hard and you've got a big rod and you're trying to heat, you know, to temper it or not temper it, you're trying to anneal it. it uh, it's hard to get the heat even. So you end up getting it too hot in a spot, not hot enough in another. I did that with a, a five foot piece. I was able to get that bent and we have some of the results over here and you can see what I mean. You can still see some of the soot that's on there so you can't quite burn it all off. And if you get it too hot, you'll start to def deform the aluminum. And um, so what I did is I stopped using the acetylene torch because it was just too hot. I, I actually started using map gas, the yellow map gas, and uh, I got it to, you can get it to about 600 degrees in the area, but then it cools down pretty rapidly. So I was like, man, this, this kind of, it's a lot of work and I'm not sure, you know, 
how much I'm really annealing it. So I decided, well, why don't I just throw it in my oven? I can get it to probably 400, 450 degrees. I'll let it in there and I'll let it cool and we'll go ahead and bend it. So that's what I actually did. And that's what this piece is here. This has been annealed in the oven. And I found that when I heated it with the torch, I had about five degrees spring back. In other words, once it bends, and I'll show you in the bend here, once it bends, once you let off the pressure, it's going to spring back. So I had about five degrees. Now, when I put it in the oven and I, and I heated it, I found that I had about 10 degrees of spring back. So I still have some hardening in this material. I didn't get it all the way annealed. Now, the other thing is when you bend or you, you stretch the metal when it's annealed, it'll actually start to work harden it again, apparently. Now, to what degree, it's not going to have the same harness as the 6511, but this isn't like a, a structural piece. It's not part of a frame. It's basically just, you know, a roof rack that's going to haul kayaks and, and light things like that. So there's no chance of somebody dying if, if, if something would fail. But chances of this failing, honestly, it's, it's pretty much not going to happen. Right? All right, over here you can see in the oven here, this is how I hung three pieces in here and I annealed it that way. And typically when you powder coat, you're going to be about 400 degrees generally to flow out. So just in the future, if you, do, if you are powder coating uh, 6061 and it's heat treated, if you powder coat it, you are going to um, anneal it. Um, you're going to lose a little, uh, probably at least half the hardening, maybe more. Um, because that snapped instantaneous and now I can bend it with only 10 degrees spring back. I can get it the full 90 degrees, not a problem. So that's something to keep in mind. That's a, probably a lot why people anodize 60, 60, 11 is to, so it keeps the heat treat. But you can see here's my second set of bends after this was with the 10 degree spring back. And this is just to basically verify that I got 90 degrees. Um, I squared it up on here and I used my digital angle uh, gauge here so that I know where I'm at. And that's how I found that I had to go 10 degrees back. And then once I released the stress relief that I pulled it out, put it on the T-square and made sure it was square. So this pipe bender I built uh, quite a few years ago, and I'm sure some of you might have some questions about it. If you go back into my video history, several years ago and three shop locations ago, I actually show building this a little bit. It's just film with the cell phone. It's nothing great, but it shows you in a little bit more detail. But this is basically uh, a plans I got off the internet from gottrikes.com. That's trikes, um, bicycles, uh, three wheel bicycles. This guy builds three wheel bicycles and he came up with his own tube bender. And uh, I think I have maybe $600 in material uh, in this. So it's pretty, uh, pretty reasonably priced compared to buying like a JD squared, which is about $600 just for, you know, a manual bender. So, I mean, it's, it, it, it's a little tedious drilling your holes and getting everything lined up right. But, you know, if you take your time with it, it does, it does a really nice job. I put it on some caster so I can wheel it around. Uh, I've never painted it or powder coated it. At the time I didn't have the big oven. Now I have a big oven, I should really powder coat it. But uh, it's just using a Harbor Freight 20 ton or eight ton uh, air over hydraulic jack. Um, and you can actually manually pump it up. It does a decent job. I just use this digital angle gauge here to, to read my angles. Um, and it, it's a nice little piece for what it is. I don't do a lot of bending. If I did, I would probably look in something a little bit more industrial, but for what I do do, <laughs> it, uh, it works perfectly fine. So that's the story with this guy, but let's see it bend. We're going to be bending 6061 T6 511. Alright, we got to turn on our gauge here. This is already calibrated because I've been bending with it. It's at set, it says it's 87 degrees. So we need to take this to 45 degrees. And I found with this heat treatment that I did, or this annealing I did, not heat treatment, I need 10 degrees of uh, over. So I need to go to actually 35 degrees and I get 10 degrees spring back and then we, we hit our 45 degree mark.
Now we're a little bit over 45, but we need to go to 35. that push this back a little bit Ease out. get this out of the way now because I've had I have 10 degrees spring back that's more than normal five degrees is pretty typical uh, typical of DOM and uh, I guess regular aluminum I'm really tight on here I have to pound this out the amount that it's pulled back there. If we pull this guy out, here I have my angle finder set at 45. And you can see it overlays, overlays pretty much spot on. I mean, I'm sure there's a, f a few um, whatever degrees, not, not degree, full degrees, probably half degree or something that's not perfect, but the digital gauge fi angle finder will get you really, really, really close. And if you hit the same numbers every time, at least your pieces will be consistent and you can work with consistent. So there you go. Quick chop in the bandsaw and we are in business. Both pieces of leech match. And, um, I'll make sure that we use them in the right way. You can see it, it bends it slightly different on the die. But if you make sure you're facing them both the same way, i.e. that way and, and this this way, it'll be perfectly fine. Alrighty guys, hopefully that helps some of you out there that maybe were thinking about bending some 60-61. Uh, um, I'm building the, the uh, the bends right here, and I got this done today. This is just the top surround. Um, it's pretty big. It's 12 foot, I think, 130 inches, whatever that math is. Um, but hopefully that helps somebody out, and you won't be intimidated to bend it. It's pretty simple. You can you can heat it with the torch and uh, anneal it, and it bends pretty easy. But if you try and bend it without annealing it first, it'll just snap. I mean, it won't make it five degrees. So. Alrighty guys, I'll give you some more updates as I uh, get further along on this guy. Alrighty guys, have a good one. So bring your A game, cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time, sipping strawberry lime, you know I wanna share it with you. Places going